Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday morning to you. Welcome to another Psalms devotional time. I'm Pastor Jason Van Bemmel, Forest Hill Presbyterian Church. It is good to be with you on this Friday morning. Boy, that week flew by. I don't know if it did for you, but it certainly did for me. And uh, here we are on Friday morning, and we're taking a look at Psalm 94. Uh, Psalm 94 is uh, a, excuse me, Psalm 94 is an imprecatory psalm. It is a psalm calling for God to execute his justice on those who are opposing and persecuting God's people. Uh, As long as we live in a fallen world, as long as evil people continue to oppose the gospel and sometimes do so violently, uh, I believe the imprecatory psalms will always have a place, not necessarily a major place, but a place within the the spiritual lives of God's people. Uh, And of course, we in the New Covenant age don't necessarily direct them against geopolitical, physical, human enemies, but we direct them against the spiritual forces that are behind uh, the wicked people who are persecuting God's people. So behind every tyrant, every oppressor, every opposer, every wicked person who exalts himself against the gospel and against the church behind them is of course the devil and and uh the prince the powers and principalities in the heavenly places and so the imprecatory psalms uh can be most properly directed against satan's activity in this world so psalm 94 it also has just some wonderful gems for us to hold on to uh in terms of hope and encouragement uh in the midst of being an imprecatory psalm. So let's uh, let's pray and then let's read the psalm together. Father in heaven, thank you so much for another day of life. We take it for granted, but we don't deserve it. We haven't earned it. You give it to us freely because you love us. You wake us up in the morning and you fill our lungs with breath and you keep our hearts beating and our, our brains functioning and our bodies moving because you love us and you have set your love upon us and we thank you for the gift of another day of life. We thank you for the gift of your word as we come to Psalm 94 this morning. We pray that you would speak to us through it and that you would write it on our hearts, Father, for your glory in our lives. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, Psalm 94. O Lord, God of vengeance, O God of vengeance, shine forth. Rise up, O judge of the earth. Repay to the proud what they deserve. O Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked exult? They pour out their arrogant words. All the evildoers boast. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They kill the widow and the sojourner and murder the fatherless. And they say, the Lord does not see. The God of Jacob does not perceive. Oh, understand, O oh, dullest of the people. Fools, when will you be wise? He who planted the ear, does he not hear? He who formed the eye, does he not see? He who disciplines the nations, does he not rebuke? He who teaches man knowledge, the Lord, knows the thoughts of man, that they are but a breath. Blessed is the man whom you discipline, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law to give him rest from days of trouble until a pit is dug for the wicked, for the Lord will not forsake his people. He will not abandon his heritage, for justice will return to the righteous, and all the upright in heart will follow it. Who rises up for me against the wicked? Who stands up for me against the evildoers? If the Lord had not been my help, my soul would soon have lived in the land of silence. When I thought my foot slips, your steadfast love, O Lord, held me up. When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul. 
Can wicked rulers be allied with you? Those who frame injustice by statute, they band together against the life of the righteous and condemn the innocent to death. But the Lord has become my stronghold and my God, the rock of my refuge. He will bring back on them their iniquity and wipe them out for their wickedness. The Lord our God will wipe them out. Mm. Now that may seem like a very harsh way to end a psalm. You know, the psalm ends by this declaration that God is going to wipe out the wickedness of the wicked and he's going to, you know, pour out on them the iniquity. And it opens up with calling God the God of vengeance twice. And there are some people who say this doesn't seem very Christian. You know, this seems, this is that sort of stereotypical, the God of the Old Testament is kind of grumpy, whereas the God of the New Testament is much nicer. Well, read Hebrews, because God never changes. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hebrews 13, 8. Our God is a consuming fire. It is a fearful thing to fall into the hands of a holy God. It's Hebrews 12. So God never changes. And, and no one spoke more words about judgment, eternal judgment, and the consequences of wickedness than Jesus, who spoke on hell more often than any other person in the Bible. So we need to get over our stereotypes and actually let the Bible speak to us. The truth is that our hope is that God will, in fact, eliminate evil from his creation once and for all when Jesus comes again. When Jesus comes again, Revelation pictures him as riding on a white horse with a sword of judgment coming out of his mouth and his robes dipped in blood. And he will execute justice on the nations. He will execute justice on the earth. And if you pay attention to what is going on around the world, your heart will not be repulsed by that thought, but your heart will cry out, Maranatha, come quickly, Lord Jesus. You will say with Psalm 94, O Lord, God of vengeance, God of vengeance, shine forth, rise up, O judge of the earth. This is calling for the second coming of Jesus. That's what this Psalm 94 will only be fully answered when Jesus comes again. So the language may seem harsh to us, it may seem foreign to us, but it really is calling for the second coming of Christ and the final judgment on the wicked. And that is the day when all evil will be eliminated from God's creation forever and banished to outer darkness where there is weeping and gnashing of teeth. And like I said, if you're paying attention at all, I mean, child trafficking, human slavery, abortion, just the callous way that we dispose of unborn children in this world. Over a billion, over a billion unborn children have been slaughtered in their mother's wombs since 1980 worldwide. Over 60 million in this country since Roe v. Wade uh, in 1973. Uh, just the persecution of Christians around the world. Uh, the, the death of of pastors and church leaders, the burning of churches, the banishing of missionaries, the, I mean, it should, you could just go on and on with the kinds of things that are happening in the world. Whenever I watch the United Nations General Assembly sort of co convene and I, I realize you look around and you count heads of the nations that are there, most of them are, are, are dictatorships. Most of them are iron-fisted, unjust rulers who are oppressing their people at one level or another because that's the way the world works. And it's not right. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They kill the widow and the sojourner and murder the fatherless. And they say, the Lord does not see the God of Jacob does not perceive. They just mock God. Oh, God, come on. Get real. It's the 21st century. Why would I fear God? That's so archaic. 
Oh, no, 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 no. Psalm 94 is so clear. To do so is to be thick-headed and foolish because God hears and God sees and God knows. And it is the wicked of the world who are but a breath and they will pass away. And then in verse 12, we get, we get kind of the hinge of Psalm 94. Blessed is the man whom you discipline, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law. And this is where we need to be humbled. Because I believe Psalm 94 verse 12 tells us that if it were not for God's grace, choosing to discipline us and to teach us the truth, we would be just like the wicked of the world. We would be the dullest of the people. We would be the fools who think that God doesn't see. I mean, honestly, be honest with yourself before the Lord. How many times have you sinned willfully and in your heart of hearts you thought, ah, God doesn't care or God doesn't see. You, know, you told a lie. You gossiped about someone. You slandered someone. You looked at something on the internet that you should not have. You stole something in some way, maybe not an actual theft or burglary, but you stole something in some way that you knew wasn't right. Uh, how many times have we done that? And we've just thought, but what, what keeps us from being just like the wicked of the world? It's only one thing, the grace of God, the grace of God. Blessed is the man whom you discipline, O Lord, and whom you teach out of your law. This is God's grace that he would discipline us and that he would teach us his ways. God will not forsake his people. He will not abandon his heritage. He has good reason to do so. We've given him more than sufficient reason to abandon us and forsake us, but God will not do it. He won't do it because he's purposed in his sovereign grace that he will save his people. And so he will persevere in saving grace with his people. And so who's going to defend his people against the wicked, against the evildoers? Who's going to keep his people from becoming like the wicked and the evildoers? It will be God. If the Lord had not been my help, my soul would soon have lived in the land of silence. When I thought my foot slips, your, there it is, your steadfast love, your hased, O Lord, held me up. When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul. So God, do, God in his grace protects us from the real disastrous consequences of the wicked and the evildoers out there, which would be to cause us to deny our faith, to cause us to walk away from Christ. That's what it means when my foot slips. When I thought my foot slips, it means I, I thought I was going to lose my grip on my faith in God. I thought I was just going to—I thought I was just going to fall away from following after Christ. But no, no, and it's not my faith that holds me up. Notice, it's not my faith that holds me up. It's not my determination. It's not my free will. It's not my decision that holds me up. It's God's steadfast love, His Chesed, His covenantal faithful loyalty to his own. When the cares of my heart are many, have, have the cares of your heart been many recently? Because I think they have, mine have. When the cares of my heart are many, your consolations cheer my soul. Notice, the news doesn't cheer my soul. Gossiping with my friends doesn't cheer my soul. Complaining about politics doesn't cheer my soul. The consolations of God, the consolations of the gospel, the steadfast love of the Lord holds me up and cheers my soul. That is our hope. We just need to hear it again and again because it's true. The Lord is our stronghold. My God is the rock of my refuge. And one day he will make a final end of the wicked. And until that day comes, he holds us up and he cheers our soul. He protects us from the evil without. He redeems us from the evil within and he directs our steps homeward toward him. Amen. 
Let's pray together. Father, what glorious truth. What powerful hope you give us in your word. Well, the cares of our hearts have been many, Lord. You know the hearts of your people, so you know when we say the cares of our hearts have been many. That's true. We're concerned about so much. COVID, unrest in our cities, injustice, politics, wildfires tearing up and down the West Coast, hurricane damage on the Gulf Coast with more hurricanes lined up in the Atlantic Ocean. Father, it's it's been a troubling year. And on one level, we can stand back and we can say, well, it's what we deserve. As a nation, we deserve to have trouble poured out on us because we have been denying God and forsaking the Lord and going our own way and being hard-hearted and stubborn and foolish. And yes, even the church. The church has neglected the call to justice and faithfulness and mercy and love and evangelism. We've been selfish and prideful and hard-hearted. Our nation and the church within this nation very much deserve your judgment. But, oh, Father, don't let our feet slip. Oh, Father, please uphold us by your steadfast love. Oh, Father, please be our rock and our refuge. And may we hide ourselves in you. Father, we do want to pray for those who are fighting the wildfires on the West Coast. Would you be with them? Would you please send rain like mercy from heaven, so undeserved, but so desperately needed? Father, would you be with those in the Gulf Coast, in Alabama and Florida, who are rebuilding, uncovering, who are dealing with devastating loss? Would you comfort them and would you strengthen them? And, oh, Father, would you build up your church? Would you build up your church by your grace for your glory? In this world, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for joining me again this morning. Uh, I hope I can see you on Sunday morning at 930. We will be gathering together under the pavilion and the sycamore tree out at the 4-H camp. It's probably going to be a little on the chilly side this Sunday morning, the weather forecast looks like. So you might want to wear a jacket, maybe bring a blanket for your family. Uh, but it should be a beautiful morning other than being a little bit chilly. So looking forward so much to gathering together for worship. Hope to see you then. Uh, if not, we'll see you back here on Monday morning as we go on to Psalm 95. So next week, 95, 96, 97, we'll just keep going. Those are some wonderful psalms, by the way, that we'll be doing next week. So we're looking forward to those. May the Lord bless you and keep you until we are together again.